we are all familiar with the earth's only natural satellite the moon but did you know even our host the milky way has a few satellite galaxies the most prominent of them all are the large and the small magellanic clouds visible from the southern hemisphere the large and the small magellanic clouds are classified as dwarf irregular galaxies most interesting of them all is the large magellanic cloud it is home to one of the largest and the most active starburst h2 regions in the local group of galaxies that's a big title indeed better known as the tarantula nebula due to its resemblance to this familiar arachnid this h2 region spans a thousand light years across and is about 180000 light years away from the earth in the center of this star forming region lies a huge cluster containing some of the largest hottest and the most massive stars known known as the star cluster r136 the powerful winds and the ultraviolet radiation originating from this star cluster is what has given the tarantula nebula its shape If this were in our host galaxy say at the distance of the Orion nebula then it would take up half of a night sky and even cast shadows close to the nebula is also the site of the closest supernova in the modern times SN 1987A classified as a type 2 supernova it was the first supernova that modern astronomers were able to observe and study in great detail and its observations have provided much insight into core collapse supernovae approximately 2 to 3 hours before the visible light from sn 1987a reached the earth a burst of neutrinos was observed at three neutrino observatories This was likely due to neutrino emission which occurs simultaneously with core collapse but before the visible light is emitted. Visible light is transmitted only after the shock wave reaches the stellar surface. SN 1987A should have resulted in a neutron star given the size of the original star. The Hubble Space Telescope has taken images of the supernova regularly since August 1990 without a clear detection of a neutron star. a number of possibilities for the missing neutron star were being considered the first was that the neutron star is being enshrouded in dense dust clouds another was that a pulsar was formed but with either an unusually large or small magnetic field it was also thought that large amounts of material might have fallen back on the neutron star so that it further collapsed into a black hole other scenarios also were being considered such as whether the collapsed core became a quark star However, to everyone's relief in 2019, evidence was presented that a neutron star was inside one of the biggest dust clumps close to the expected position of the supernova remnant. We have seen the supernova evolve over the years. 